So last I left you guys, we had some work that needed to be done. I needed to put some OSB on here as well as hook up my RO system. So thank you for watching part one, definitely appreciate it. And here is part two of my fish room build and hopefully the last part. I don't, I don't wanna to do too many parts of this. Hopefully the uh, first video isn't too long. I haven't even edited it yet, but I know it's gonna be a long one. So what we're gonna do is, the fish room's a mess. As you can see, there is crap everywhere. So this has been the build process, you know, just getting stuff in place, RO water storage soon to come. But let's go ahead and uh, do some movie magic here. Dun, 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 dun. And now it's all clean. Look at that. Someone organized over there. I'll get to that later. But yeah, got all the OSB on there. It's all ready to go. Got that one tank up there and check this out. It doesn't wobble now. Yeah, it's amazing what some plywood could do. My arm wobbles though. Yeah, don't look at that. <laughs> so uh, next steps is setting up the RO system. So this is what I got for my RO. Let's go check it out. So I got a six stage RODI system from Bulk Reef Supply and I'm super excited for it. And this is where I'm going to go put it. So originally I was gonna put it in the wall, but I'm not gonna do that. So where I'm gonna install it is, I'm gonna install it in my laundry room. So I'm gonna go ahead and move all this stuff that is kinda cluttered in the way from moving. And I'm gonna either mount it on the wall here or up there somewhere but we're gonna go ahead and do some movie magic and clean this stuff up, so. And now it's all clean, and we have an RO system installed. So it took me quite a while to figure out how to get inside here and connect that Y. So they didn't leave me a lot of space between the, the board here and the outlet. So trying to get that Y in there, I spent quite a while. I had to buy a couple different fittings to get it to work. Um, and then trying to find studs and whatnot to mount this. The studs aren't wide enough for how big this system is, or the studs are too wide for how big the system is. So eventually I may mount that to a board and then mount it right here. But for now, these have flat bottoms on them. So they are pretty sturdy by themselves. And I have a 150 gallon per day output. So you can see that's just spitting out RO. So this thing will fill up real quick. I've got a float valve coming. I'm just gonna drill a hole in the side of the bucket and attach that float valve. So as the water rises, it's gonna cut off that valve. But I had already flushed the system. When you get a new RO system like this, you want to flush the membranes before you run it through your DI. So there's a little flush on the back of the system that you can use. Uh, I flushed it for about an hour and then I disposed of all of the water. I just took this blue line and shoved it down the drain. Uh, I did that for about an hour and a half, which was about uh, an hour, two hours is what they recommended. So what's really cool is this thing has a built-in TDS meter. So I can see the TDS coming out as well as I can see the TDS that's going into the DI system. So this will definitely help when I need to change my filters because that's gonna tell me exactly how and when I need to change my filters. And then I am always prepared. I have water sensors. So if this thing leaks here, this will go off. If anything leaks underneath my washing machine, that one will go off. And this is like an alarm, like a uh, fire alarm. So if anything happens, I'm gonna know, and that can actually be connected to my phone. So I'll be aware of anything if anything happens. I figured the dogs would bark if I set that off, but I'm gonna get a couple more of those and install them in the fish room. So if I'm gone, I'll hear exactly if there's a water leak. So that way I can rush home, I can do whatever I need to do, I can reach out to somebody and have them come over and check things out. But definitely a good investment. I'll uh, see if I could find the link for them, but it's nice because they're connected to Wi-Fi and an app and you'll know exactly if there's a water leak anywhere in your house. 
All right, we're back in the fish room and I have RO that has been remineralized and is aerating. So what I'm gonna do is I will go ahead and let that aerate overnight because that is going to be going into these three new tanks. So because it's going into new tanks without livestock, I have no problems throwing it into a tank right away. Instead of waiting the, you know, two to three days that I normally do for the RO to age. I got a lot done today. So I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, you know, cap the day off, but we will be back at it tomorrow. So stay tuned. Good morning, everyone. So it is a brand new day. The sun is shining. I have a fish room to be built. So we're gonna get back to it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some substrate in these tanks and then I mad science together some uh, plumbing components because I ordered a 100 foot uh, coil of vinyl tubing to make my life easier with moving water around. But I don't wanna wait until that gets here because I don't wait for anything. So what I did was, let me show you. I had a couple pieces of vinyl tubing that I attached to a power head. And I'm sure you guys have all seen one of these. So this is a little squeeze valve that you use and that will create a siphon to start a siphon on a vacuum. But I don't have any couplings so I'm using that as a coupling for the power head. Now, my hopes are that this doesn't blow off. I've got no compression fittings on either side. So hopefully the flow with the gravity up to the tanks is enough to keep the flow low that this just isn't gonna pop off and send water everywhere. Before I turn it on, I will definitely Make sure those ends are seated in there as tight as possible. But that's going to save me a lot of trouble from using this tube to the buckets, to the tank, tube to the buckets, to the tank. If I can just fill this to there, that'll make things a lot easier. So I'm going to throw some substrate in here. We'll go ahead and put a time lapse up of me doing this and we'll see if I end up with water all over the floor. All right, wish me luck. Well, I didn't put my phone into airplane mode when I recorded that video. I received a phone call and it stopped about seven minutes in. So I didn't get the rest of the footage, but I will tell you guys, nothing happened there there wasn't anything that exciting that happened i ended up dragging the barrel over after the first tank just to get rid of that squeeze valve because it was restricting flow and i didn't want to sit here forever but i got all three tanks filled up there's a little bit left in the bucket that i'm going to dump into here into this tank here but uh everything looks good i ended up sliding these over just a little bit. That way they're a little bit more centered on the rack as well. And even full of water with 10 gallons, 80 pounds, I was able to push and just have them slide over so it wasn't, it wasn't hard. It's a little stuff floating in the tank. <laughs> so it was, uh, it was something easy to do. I, I didn't have to drain the tank and then move it, but I just wanted to make sure that it was a little bit more centered on that rack because I had it right on the edge and I know this thing is pretty sturdy. I have it on the middle rack. Usually you want to load weight from the bottom up, but I figured with how wide this is, it's not, it's not super slender. So it's not going to topple over, but I still didn't want everything forward. So I put it more in the center, but I am going to uh, go ahead and start breaking down the other 10 gallon tanks and throw them on here. So I'm gonna move all of my shrimp in here besides the coal tank for now, and then uh, kind of go from there. So, you know, stay tuned. All right, got all the tanks in here besides the coal tank, but this place is a mess. I've got the, the airlines hooked up. 
So I got most of it together. I need to grab a couple more lids. Uh, I think I'm probably going to grab my old lids that I used to have. That was like the uh, corrugated plastic and use those for the time being, but I'm gonna have to buy some thicker corrugated plastic to make lids with. But here, check everything out. So everything is a mess right now, but I'm still in the middle of everything. And then I've got a red sea tank given to me. So I'm gonna be setting up some salt water. I might do some live rock and a couple corals, maybe a mantis shrimp, we'll see. But this thing's, this thing's pretty legit. Total legitness. So it's got a uh, chiller, which is pretty cool. And I know nothing about salt water, so. But work in progress. So I ended up taking the water out of this tank and putting it down here in this tank. Simply for the one fact that there is a couple shrimp in here and some snails and the water level was about this deep. So I didn't have time to get RO water for that tank when we moved. And it basically was, I had taken a bunch of plants out of here. So when I netted those plants out, I knew there was gonna be baby shrimp on there. So instead of just trying to sort through them or having them uh, be thrown out in the trash. I put them in a tank by themselves, added a little bit of water, and they've kind of been thriving in there. There's a, there's some buffering substrate. I didn't have a filter, I just had a air stone, but it seemed to be doing okay. Got the crystal tank down here. Black King Kongs, Calcios, uh, Tangerine Tigers, Blue Bolts. And then I'm probably gonna start separating shrimp out into these, maybe get some new ones. But like I said in the intro, I've been having a lot of deaths, so hopefully the transition here isn't going to be a, a big issue. And then for the pumps, I just threw them up here. <laughs> I've got this jug up here, because without the weight on the rack, it vibrates the metal rack underneath put the jug up there, no more vibration noise. And of course, mounted the power strip. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the finishing touches, you know, uh, get everything cleaned up in here. So what we'll do is uh, take a spin around the room and when we come back, everything will be clean. And it's all done, look at that. Oh yeah, that's right. Fish room complete. At least until I get some more tanks, but it is all done. Check it out. Oh, Poseidon's pets. Uh, there's massive glare here. Let's better fix that for you. <laughs> So orange eye blue tigers and black King Kong extremes. My calcios, which I've got a few left. These were the ones that I was most upset about to lose, especially the dragon bloods. Tangerine tigers and blue auras. Blue bolts. And then three new tanks. Need more RO water which I moved the RO over here. Got all my plugs zip tied up, my lights zip tied up, and then my pumps are up there for now. So in the future, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna run a central line across the whole top of the roof, and then that way I can just drop lines wherever I want to. Down here we got Crystal reds and crystal blacks. Looks like we got a buried female, two buried females up front. That's right, make me more babies. And then, like I said, this was the tank that kind of just held a bunch of plants in it. And there's a couple shrimp in there, not too, too many. I had dropped some food in here, hoping they would go for it. Oh, it didn't sink. That was some snowflake food. So, won't get to see what's in here. It'll be a mystery. And of course, the coal tank. 
These guys are struggling just like everybody else. Um, I'm finding quite a few deaths in here. One to two a day. There's quite a few shrimp still in here, but it is unfortunate. The moss is absolutely growing like crazy though. So all my moss in here is doing great, but the shrimp not so much. So it is what it is. Now I got a question for you guys. I have this 20 tall. Now I did just see there's a big chip in it. Now this isn't a little chip. In my mind, that's pretty significant. So it's about quarter of the way through the glass. All you shrimp tank, fish tank experts out there, fill it, chuck it. What do you think? What should I do? My first instinct is don't risk it. I don't need water on the floor, but what would you do? If you had this tank, what would you do? I wouldn't trust it. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. We'll see. So leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you would do with a tank like this. It's sad because I was excited for another tank, but it is what it is. Some storage down below, but overall, everything's coming together. That's messy, don't mind that. So this has been a long month for me. Uh, this has spanned over the last two, three weeks since we moved in, which was May 15th. So it's it's been a long haul, but it's, it's finally come to fruition. I feel like I'm done. I feel like I did it, we're there. Now I just need to uh, get these other tanks up and running, do some water changes, and return all the extra stuff from Home Depot that I didn't need. But as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. I definitely appreciate it. I know I've taken a little bit of a hiatus from YouTube, but I had good reason. Plus, we just moved. So thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, enjoy the rest of your day. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.